Hi, Amanda Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Show. I promised you, I promised you a video about making silicone moulds, didn't I? And the reason I've got to make a silicone mould is because I want to make this. And this is a product that I'm bringing out called RetroNet Adapter. It looks like a little modem, doesn't it? And that's because it is. You plug this into any retro computer with a little wire or plug it straight in potentially. And uh, you'll get Wi-Fi, internet, access to bulletin boards and the internet if your machine's beefy enough via this. Nice and simple. Jobs are good. And problem is, it's no good if it's just sort of sitting there as a kind of a proof of concept toy. And uh, I'm just trying to actually finish this off. So the idea behind this now is that I'm going to take... Where did that water come from? This water just came out of it. The idea behind this now is that I'm going to make a silicone mould of this. And excuse the colour, it's not very good contrast with this other grey stuff here. It comes out this sort of honeycomb centred goodness. You can see that's the sort of bottom half of one of those. And the idea is you build something like that, which is technically what this is, but it's been primed and sanded because I wanted a bit of a better finish because it's kind of, it's about as much of a finish as you can get on it for a 3D print. So you can see it doesn't quite look 3D printed. But the problem is if you make a cast off this, and I've done that in the previous video you might have seen, it ends up looking 3D printed. So really you have to put some high build on there and try to actually hand work that till you can get something as smooth as possible. Um, because if you don't, you know, you end up with something like this, which was this one, but sanded down by hand. And it's a lot of effort and it's not a great finish to start with. So what I'm going to do is make a silicone mould of this now using the, my little jigs. I've got some jigs here I've made. And uh, they pretty much marry the exact form of the product. I'm going to put it all together and uh, mix up some silicone and show, show you. It's a pretty simple process. And then after that silicone is set in 24 hours, I'll be able to take a resin cast of this that I can then machine by hand better or sort of hand finish better because resin is far more stable than PLA from a 3D printer. So that's what I'm going to do. So first things first, I just have to sort of clean this up a little bit and attach this part. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm going to go do that and then we'll go straight into the mixing up the silicone. Okay, while I'm waiting for this to cure, and I'll tell you what part is curing, I've mixed up some two-part uh, five-minute resin, basically, and it's still a bit resiny. Uh, and what I've done is stuck these little sticks to the object. And you're thinking, why have I stuck those little sticks to the object? I'm going to show you in more detail later. But the reason is, when you've made your uh, mould, of course, you're going to need somewhere where you can actually fill the mould full of resin later. So that's what those are for. Leave them over there. I've uh, missed that out before on a previous one. I had to cut them in later. It's better to do it now if you can. But I thought in the meantime I can get all the other parts together and show you what we're dealing with. So this is Condensation Cure CS2 silicone rubber with a 100 to 5 mix of Catalyst, which is this. To the rubber and the catalyst you can see it's a dirty bottle that's because it's got pigment mixed in so you can tell when you've got it all mixed up right because the actual color will change and i believe that's by weight indeed it is by weight so what we're going to do is take the lid off here and i'm going to decanter some of this ready for when we want to use it and we've got this little pot here i think this pot should Oh, I'm just looking at it now. Let me have another eyeball in here. Mm, so hard to tell. I think this pot should do. So I'm going to go with this pot because I don't want to waste it at the same time if you you don't want to have to mix up separate batches. But it, it is a 24-hour cure time with over, I think, two hours pot life. So you've got quite a long time to work with this. Uh, before I get on, I'm going to put on some gloves for a change. Ah, much better. Yeah, I forget that every time. So you can see, oh, my tub is starting to look a little bit uh, bit down. It's almost at the halfway mark. Makes me sad seeing that. This is such good fun with this. I, you know, it makes me sad to think I'll have to wait and order more to play. But I'll top this up now. So let's see. Mm. This is a bit weird, by the way. It's like you got to be careful when you get near to the bit where you're sort of done because it, it kind of doesn't stop pouring. It's got a bit of mass to it. See? Uh, that's it. Let's get it up there. It's it's basically sticking to itself, and I think it's pulling itself out the can at that point. But it's, it's relatively clean. If you've ever used bathroom silicone, it's absolutely nothing like that. It's, um, 
it's a lot doesn't smell for example and it it's it's easier to wipe off surfaces and things and I think that's because it doesn't have a kind of curing agent in it it's just the pure product um, and although you you can actually use bathroom type silicone quite successfully there's an interesting technique for that and the nice thing about using bathroom silicone of course is it's really cheap I mean it's super cheap right you can buy that in Poundland for a tube so I wish I bought a tube actually last time I was there we could have had a go on that but it's really weird. You put, you make a bowl of washing up liquid uh, and water, if I recall, and you squirt the whole tube into the washing up liquid and water, and you you you, you mix it in a ball by hand. It's it's a very weird process, right? So it's five hundred to one by weight. Cool. So I make that nearly a hundred uh, grams, one hundred thirteen. But let's let's call it a hundred and a bit. Um, so we need uh, five grams and a bit, which is I reckon about six seven grams. So great that's a nice uh, measurement so I've learnt my lesson so what I've got now is a, a syringe we're gonna do it by a syringe so we only need six grams so the first thing we're gonna do is weigh a syringe <laughs> that's the weight of a syringe it's like nothing push the tear button Make sure you give it a really good shake. It's got that pigments in it. It's got its pigments everywhere now. So I'm going to try. Add... Yeah, this is going to be tricky. I wish I had a uh, needle, which I don't. We should have gone for a diabetic type syringe. I've got something. I've got something. Got the tiniest amount. Oh, gonna need a lot more than that. It's almost actually blocked my bloody syringe. Whatever's in that, the syringe doesn't like. It's reacting to the rubber. Okay, back to the drawing board. Yes, this is a lot sensible. <laughs> That's like nearly half this bottle used up already. That doesn't make sense. Perfect. Oh, no, still a bit on the rich side, actually. The eight, we don't quite, a bit less. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. That'll do. I think that'll do. So if you're using this, though, be careful with it, because I've clearly managed to blitz through way too much catalyst in a previous attempt here, and now I'm uh, going to run low. Okay, so that's the weighing bit, and I'm going to return this to the kitchen, and no one will be the wiser. I have to mm, give it a wash, get rid of that chemical of it. So what we're going to do now, though, is we're going to check. We're going to check our piece because I'm hoping that resin has hardened now. Yeah, it's it's kind of hardened in the tub, so I think that's hard enough. And I'm hoping. Yeah, my Lego don't don't leak. My Lego don't leak. I was promised to show you a little bit more detail on what I did here, so there you go. That's the detail. Stocking procedure. That looks kind of cool. 
Do 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 do. Anyway, enough of that. Sorry, I uh, got carried away. Mm, 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 mm. So that's the jig ready. That's good. So the next stage is mixing. So what I'm going to do is mix this with this, and then the bit that is really kind of cool that I want to show you is the pour. And the pour is going to be very hard to show you with my sort of back office setup with my camera above. But what I'm what what you have to do basically is go as high as you can. So I'm probably going to stand on my stool which I'm sitting on, of course, and I'm going to attempt to get a stream of <laughs> of silicone firing down past the camera and into the mould, this sort of, uh, I don't know what you call the thing that, that you're, uh, the thing I'm moulding the mould with, this sort of jig. And then the purpose of that is, is to get the stream, if you can imagine this is going into your mould, the higher you can get, the thinner. So you can see it's getting uh, really thin. And if you can get it super thin, no air bubble can exist in it. The air bubbles will pop on the way down. Mm, why am I mixing it in such a bloody small tub? Um, so no air bubbles can exist on it on the way down and it'll just hopefully get very few air bubbles in it, which are kind of a nightmare in your mold. Everything you do in this process tries to introduce air bubbles, and I don't have the equipment to try to get rid of them just yet. But there are two ways, well, there are probably more than two ways, there's three ways to get rid of air, as far as I know. The first way is to do the very narrow pour, and that's pretty good technique. You should probably just do that anyway when you can. The second way is to use a vacuum chamber. So I think when you prepare your mix like this, you can pop this into a vacuum chamber, and that will cause the bubbles to rise to the surface and pop. But then, of course, you do require a vacuum. And then the other thing is called a pressure chamber. And if you can use a pressure chamber, but you have to put the whole piece. So you put the whole lot in the pressure chamber. And what the pressure chamber does, it sort of basically crushes all of those bubbles down, 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 down. So they're so tiny, they don't even matter to you anymore. There you go, you can see it's now finally starting to take a quite uniform colour. Some of these lollies are actually lolly sticks that I have added to my lolly stick collection by eating lollies. So in the mould is a little bit of my feast. So yeah, there's literally a little bit of me in every one of these things I make. There we go, almost there almost there. You'll see it getting totally kind of uniform. Once you get all that, those little black bits of pigment disappearing off, you know you've done a good job. And you can see there's no way I can avoid mixing air in the way I'm mixing it right now. It's, I suppose you could probably let it settle and hope bubbles will rise to the surface, but it's hard to describe how viscous this is. This feels like nothing's rising nowhere. So I'm just going to leave that for about mo just a moment, really. I don't want to waste time because last time I wasted time on the uh, resin side of things, it kind of knackered the whole lot. I'm just seeing if I've got any pieces here that might aid me in my delivery because I have to get the resin into this little tiny slot down here. So I thought if I add these pieces, <laughs> that's my little target. That's my target window. Those are good. Those are all good. There we go. So I'm going to be aiming to do something uh, almost on my camera. I don't know if you can see that. It's such a tiny stream right here. It's probably thinner than a human hair. So I'm going to get ready and let's start with the pouring action. Right, I'm up here like so I'm going to start low, which is fine anyway because we're at the bottom of the mould, and then work my way up, but I've not got much of an aperture to play with here. I could have made that a little bit bigger. I suspect some of these Lego blocks are going to get a bit of uh, slime on them. Here we go. Okay, trying to get higher, but 
It's all bunching up. That's it, we got a bit of a stream going. Yeah, satisfying. It is quite cool the way this works. I can't really tell how full I am. You at home can probably see better than me. I'd say it's about halfway now. As per usual, mixed up way too much. Saying that, no, I don't know. Oh, my hands are getting shaky. No. Yes. Come on there. The silence is deafening. Oh. No, 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 no. It's getting carried away there. Right. Oh. That looks pretty good. I can see that side is higher than this side right now, so it's probably going to start to try to overfill a bit, which um, maybe I ought to think about in terms of building a Lego bridge thing. Nah, just leave it. Leave it be. It's going to be fine. Absolutely fine. Oops, stay there, stay there, stay there. So that's it now. It's full of the silicone and hopefully relatively bubble free. So I'm just going to leave this in here for 24 hours and then we'll be able to retrieve the object out of the uh, mould. So yeah, hang with me and uh, we'll uh, visit this in a, some sort of, you know, fancy shoo, shoo, jump cut. The time has elapsed. It is pretty much exactly 24 hours later. So that means I get to now open up this Pharaoh's Tomb of Treasure. Just to show you, the silicone doesn't, you know, it's not, it's sticky, but not too sticky. So if you've got to clean something, you could probably just get a um, toothpick or something like that and just run it in there and pull it off like a some sort of Lego protective shield for your Lego. So if you need some Lego shield shielding, let me know. And uh, you can just rub off the remainder, put it back in your Lego box or your children's Lego box. There we go, another piece there. I'm just gonna just, I'm just testing these as I sort of take them off. Yeah, that is that, it is easy. I'm just I'm not making myself out to be a liar here. That's, the, that's what I wanna ensure. So you can see a little bit of oozage coming out of the sort of cavity there, but not much. It's really quite good. In fact, earlier I had to go mixing up some resin itself on something that had really massive gaps and the resin itself wasn't particularly thick, but even that didn't ooze out. I was mildly surprised. So we know that this crossbar is actually connected to some metal work effectively in the piece. So I want to be a bit cautious with it. So rather than just sort of yank it out, I'm going to work my way around by trying to just take the sides off this thing. I have to admit it's being, it is being held on. And that's because, look, the Lego is actually seeped between the, uh, sorry, the, the, the silicone is seeped between the uh, Lego pieces there. No wonder it sort of glued itself slightly. And of course, I say Lego, this actually is Cobby, um, a kind of off-brand Lego who make um, military type things because Lego aren't into making, you know, Navy boats and things like that with guns on them, but Cobby is. Right, we're getting to the point though where I've uh, constructed it so that I can't really get in that way. So I'm going to just take it off the board at the bottom. Oh, how cool is that? Look at that. Woo. How com is that Lego compatible? I need to just try something real quick. It is, you know, you can make your own Lego this way. That is awesome. And it's good to see, I'm looking at it and I'm going to try to zoom in because you guys really ought to see this. 
it's actually captured the indent of the actual writing that's on those pieces. That's just to show you how fine a detail really you can capture. So that's why it's so important to get your piece right when you're uh, before you mold it because you're going to get every imperfection. Nice work. I suppose you could sort of coat the inside of these with some sort of release agent or even a bit of PVA or something to stop the silicone going where you don't want it to go. It's not a big deal, is it? It's not a big deal. Now what I ought to do, and I'm not, not going to do it in the interest of saving time, I would suggest cut these bits off, these little dingly danglers, as you go along. I think it's going to be a lot easier. You could slide a knife you see down these things like that. Yep. And just get them off now, because if you pull them and stretch them and stretch them later, you risk damaging your lovely, lovely new mould. Bang. It's a cube, a cube, finest cube. We're almost there now. How cute is that? So we're pretty much there. So just before we go any further, just because of that exact reason, I want to just trim off. And if you're doing this at home, of course, take a lot more care than me. Don't ruin all your hard work by rushing it. So we've got to see now, how can we get this bit off? So that's our jig with the connector. Look at it now, it's gonna, I think we can get it off. I think it's trying, it really wants to come with me. It wants to come with me. There we go, look at that, that is awesome. And these were our little air hole type things to let the uh, resin in when we come to fill it. So just got to decide now, how are we gonna split this? Do we wanna split it down the middle or down the side? Clearly we wanna split it down the side because if you've got an object, you want the seam to run down an edge like that. That's only traditional. So I'm gonna get my worst Stanley knife blade. In fact, oh, look, I've got a brand new one up here. Mm. And I'm going to attempt just literally to work my way around this. And I know I said before that it's nice to cut it jaggedy so that you, uh, the halves kind of lock in a bit better, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to, uh, I wanna have a seam. When we do the final casting, I want a linear seam across everything. So I'm just gonna go straight in the middle. And that's one of the joys as well of having a nice jig like this. You know that if you cut straight down the middle, you should be pretty much on the ball. And maybe don't put your blade that long. As you can see it there, there's the object with its nice blade score down the middle of it. See, that's gonna be fun to reuse that boy. I'm gonna to have to, whatever I reuse, I'll have to come off this mold now. Make sure you cut away from you. I think we're pretty much there now. Last cut. Just gonna whip it across here. Now there's a bit of metal work here, so it's not gonna to wanna to go massively easily. dissect that last bit. Gently, gently. And I think we're there. Let's get that separate out. One little piece. few little stragglers here. Ooh, there's the USB. Come on now. So close. And that's it. Hooray. Our object is out. And it's looking pretty good. Got a couple of uh, 
scars down it, but that's to be expected. So if we're going to if we want to use reuse this, for example, you're going to have to sand that and, and redo that. But that's fine. What I would rather do now is make a new complete solid resin version of that now out of this mold, and uh, take it from there. So that's pretty much the entire process, guys. The uh, next stage for me then is to sort of set this all up and start casting, but I think it's a little, already a little bit late here for me to do that. I do like now, looking at this though, looking at the base, because it's got this sort of Lego print, you could technically, yeah, you can stick it to the board and, you know, use a, a bit of sellotape, but probably what I'll do is actually just stick it to a board like that and just do it, just a gentle structure, not like a massive structure like before, but probably just use some of these Lego pieces just to hold it up like that briefly, you know, some there, some there, maybe a little pinch in the top. Um, what I would quite like to do though, while I'm still here, have a look there, you can see there, there's our wooden pegs, so we need to be able to get those out, ah, look, a little twist, and out they come, that's no problem at all, look, two holes there, I'm probably going to just end up, before I do a pour, I'll probably just clean those out a bit and make them into a funnel. But one thing I would quite like, so these are our PCB for our, our retro net here. I just want to sort of offer it up. Yes. Just to sort of show you, you can see the PCB sits in there nicely. And that's it. You literally just fill that up. I mean, we might put a jig on it still to hold it in place. But yeah, fill that up and that'll be it. All it, all in, you know, over molded inside that mold. So I hope that's been of some interest to you. Just a little bit of the process and keep a lookout for some retro nets. Hopefully they'll be appearing on my website soon and you can buy one and support the channel. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, click the little bell icon in the corner mm, there um, if you want to be notified when I make a new video. And as ever, thank you for watching.